It's delicious. I am eating something so good. Sloppy Joe's. I'm using my little rocker blade to chop these. Um, I bet your mama made sloppy joes. Whose mama did? Even if she opened the can of sloppy joe mix, she made you some sloppy joes. But today, we're going to do it homemade. some onion in here and I didn't have any fresh bell pepper so I had some in the freezer and I just beat it up so we're gonna pour it in here we're gonna saute this and fill it so it's nice and tender and then I'll probably just take it out that way it won't be swimming in hamburger grease all right, while these are um, sauteing, I like to go ahead and add a lot of my spice. Quarter teaspoon of chili to this Sloppy Joe mix. That ain't much, but that's all we want, just a taste of it, okay? I'm going to put in a whole teaspoon of pepper and a teaspoon of salt. Now, I like onion powder, and I know we got onion in here, but I still like the powder, too. One of the viewers actually told me to start using it, and I just love it and everything. So, I'm going to put in two teaspoons of this, because I love it. sloppy joes because it was one of my favorites i was always excited on sloppy joe night my mama most of the time opened the can for the most part and i will say that a lot of people talk about food tasting like a can if there's anything to me that tastes like a can it's normally tomato sauce like sloppy joes type stuff or like uh, chef Bordy, spaghetti and meatballs if it's been in the can too long you can taste the can and so be real careful um buying your sloppy joe look at the expiration date make sure it's fresh so that you don't get that awful taste today we're not going to use sloppy joe mix we're making our own but there's nothing wrong with taking shortcuts when you need to all right we're going to get this out and start brewing our ground beef and i'm just taking this out so that it's not swimming in hamburger all right now we're going to start browning our beef so we're going to turn the eye on high pretty much or close to it now i've got five pounds of ground beef and sure i'm not going to use five pounds i am only going to use about a pound and a half of ground beef for this recipe We're going to put a little bit of fresh garlic in here when we brown this beef. If you have garlic powder, use it if you don't have any fresh garlic. And just use about a half teaspoon, I guess, to a teaspoon. Just how much you like. My husband does not like garlic salt. If you use garlic salt, make sure that you um, don't over salt it. You know, you might want to reduce the salt somewhere else. When you are 
are going to want to separate the meat pretty good. So um, if you don't have a hamburger separator, I've got one. I just don't have it out right now. Just make sure you smash it down into the skillet and separate it good. All right, after you ground your beef, my beef was actually chucked, so there was hardly anything down on the bottom, so I'm not going to drain it because there's not enough down in there to fool with to me. So what we're going to do is add our onion and pepper and spices to the beef. Now I'm going to add a can, a small 8 ounce can of tomato sauce. Right now, while you still have your can, we're going to fill it up with a ketchup. So just fill out up your 8 ounce can with ketchup and put it in your sauce. Now this ketchup does have a little Worcestershire in it already, vinegar, and it has sugar in it. So remember that. We're going to taste it before we add sugar. Now, I'm going to add a little extra Worcestershire. How would you say it? Don't overdo it. Some people put a little steak sauce in theirs instead of doing it that way. You can do that if you got a little A1 or whatever. You can throw that in there too. Now one thing I'm going to do today, and you can choose to do two different things. You can add a little sugar and a little vinegar, or you can put some sweet pickles in here. I'm going to put in sweet pickles because I like them. I think they taste good. I'm going to put in a good quarter cup. Now we're going to put in a little mustard, about a tablespoon. I'm going to taste this before I add any brown sugar, but we may go ahead and add a little brown sugar as well. It looks good already. Now you're going to want this to simmer a good 20 minutes or so. Just Put it on a real low heat and let those flavors get in all that meat. And you never serve a sloppy joe without putting it in the bun, tying up the bag, and let the buns get real soft. And I'm going to turn it down on low. It's plenty sweet. It's delicious. I like to take the sloppy joes and put them in the bun and then put the bun in a bag. Now, if you don't want to make all eight sloppy joes, then you can use a gallon size bag if you've got one and only, you know, put in a bag what you're going to eat and then save the rest of the bread. But I'm going to show you how I like to do it. This is my quarter cup scooper and it works perfect just for a regular hamburger size. And then I like to make, make at least, you know, four or so and get them in the bag. And if you got a big family, just go ahead and bag them all up and let them sit there for about 10 minutes before everybody comes to eat and they're gonna just be more, even better. Just fold that bag up underneath there. We'll be back in a minute.
What's so fun about eating Sloppy Joes? You get to have chips, Mama gets an easy night, and everybody gets to be sloppy at the table. Cheese puffs, yummy. See my yummy Sloppy Joe? Now you don't wanna make it so wet that the bottom of your bun is soggy. So don't add water to it, just let it simmer and it'll be just right. Mmm! Yummy! Thanks, Mama. Thanks for watching Colored Valley Cooks, where we cook like Mama did. Bye, y'all. I love ya.